Hello everyone and welcome to the Document Object Model section of the course. In this section we're going to be learning about the Document Object Model or DOM DOM, and the Document Object Model is going to allow us to interface our JavaScript code to directly interact with HTML and CSS on a web page. So far we've already learned and have a pretty good understanding of the three main front-end technologies. That's HTML for the website content, CSS for the styling of that content, and then JavaScript, which can interact with the website, HTML and CSS, and actually manipulate what you see on the page. What we actually don't know how to do yet is how to really connect that JavaScript with HTML and CSS. How can we use JavaScript to directly interact with the HTML and CSS and change what the user is actually seeing? Well, browsers will construct the document object model, which basically means storing all the HTML tags as JavaScript objects. And let me show you a very simple example of this. Imagine I have some very basic HTML over here on the left hand side. I have a head, a title, which is just my title, and in the body I have a heading one and then an anchor tag website link. And then right below that on the left hand side is what this would look like in the browser. It would just be a heading and then some link text there. When I upload this in my browser, what happens is my browser creates this document object model. And we can already see how this looks like a JavaScript object. So I have the root element, the HTML, the head, the title, the text, and I can actually grab things from this document object model using JavaScript. So we can see the DOM or DOM of any website. So you can go to a website and in the console type document to see the actual document object model. And we're going to be doing that in this lecture later on. And that will return the HTML text of the page. To see the actual objects, you want to use console.dir and then pass in document. This document object model will allow us to use JavaScript to actually interact with the web page and affect the HTML and CSS on the web page. Now keep in mind, the document object model is enormous. It has tons of properties, it's a huge object, but most developers won't use all the properties, not even close to all the properties. But we're going to be covering the most common objects used, and I want you to be prepared for the unknown. When you first see the document object model, it's going to seem really intimidating, and there's all these properties, and you'll feel like there's no way you'll ever have to be able to memorize all of them. And that's not really the point. You don't have to memorize all of them. What you have to do is have an understanding of how it works. That way, when you need something that you haven't encountered yet, you have the capability to reference it on your own and look for help on your own. So let's continue by actually exploring this idea in the browser. And afterwards, in the next lecture, we're going to go through an example of using JavaScript with the document object model. So let me hop over to my browser and kind of show you realistically what the heck I've been talking about. Okay, so here I am at Instagram.com. You can really choose any website for this exercise or this example. And hopefully now you can kind of see based off just what Instagram looks like at this moment in time, uh, you probably already have the abilities to mock up something that looks pretty similar to this just with HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap. You already know how to create forms, how to create nav bars, etc. But let's continue on and talk about the actual thing we came here for, which is the document object model. What you can do, and you can do this on any page, doesn't have to be Instagram, right click, then hit inspect, and then come to the console. And what you're going to do is just clear the console. You may have some messages here depending on what website you're visiting. Don't worry about them, just clear the console. And let's explore the document object model. Now if I just type in the variable document and hit enter, I will actually get as an output the HTML that's on this page. So I can see here there's a body, and I can keep expanding this to uh, end up seeing some scripts. Maybe I want to see these divs, etc. Eventually I'll see the forms. But that's not actually what we want to see. What we want to see is this entire document, so all the HTML and its properties, as a JavaScript object. And to do that, I can say console.dir and then pass in the document. I'll hit enter, and now we see document, and if I expand it, I get what looks like and basically is a JavaScript object where I have all these various properties and their values. And here I can actually then using JavaScript grab properties from this web page and then edit their values to actually create changes that appear to the user on the front end. And that's basically the idea behind the document object model. This is what's going to allow you to use JavaScript to actually manipulate what the user sees on the web page. And this is going to be the big leap forward for us to end our understanding of how the front end actually works. So far we have all the puzzle pieces, but we haven't really put them together. The document object model is what's going to allow us to put them all together and actually see how the front end fully collaborates with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. 
making that powerful front end stack really shine and really work. Okay, so that's all I want to cover for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're actually going to show you an example of how you can affect this document object model using JavaScript. All right, thanks everyone, and I will see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome to part one, DOM interaction. And in this lecture, we'll use JavaScript to actually interact with DOM elements. So as I mentioned, we're going to begin to see examples of how we can actually grab HTML elements from the document object model. And these HTML elements are the properties of that JavaScript object, which is the document. So we're going to be covering how to grab large groups of elements, like the entire body of the HTML, or just the head of the HTML. And then we'll focus on grabbing specific HTML items. Maybe you're interested in just grabbing a certain class or a certain ID. And in future lectures, we'll show you how you can interact with those objects. So right now, we're just focusing on grabbing those elements themselves. In future lectures, we'll show you how to change their colors or affect their properties somehow. Okay, here are some important document attributes. So you can call a document and say .url body .head .links. So .url, that's actually going to return the actual URL of the website. .body, that's everything inside the body. It's going to return the HTML of the entire body. Document.head is going to return everything that's in the head of the page. And then .links, those are all the links that are on the page. And there are many methods for grabbing specific elements from the document object model. And these methods are usually pretty self-explanatory, except for those last two. But first off, let's start off with get element by ID. So get element by ID, that returns an element with whatever ID you pass in. So imagine that your HTML has a specific ID that you clarified earlier when creating the HTML, saying document.getElement by ID will actually grab those elements. Well, usually ID is a single element by the ID you pass in. Then you can get element by class name, so pass in a class, and it will return a list of all items belonging to that class. Then document.getElement by tag name returns a list of all elements of a certain tag. So if you want everything that has an anchor tag, you can do that as well. Then we have query selector and query selector all. They're a little more new than the previous three, but they're still pretty well used now, depending uh, when you actually are viewing this. But the query selector returns the first object matching the CSS style selector. And then query selector all returns all objects matching the CSS style selector. And we're going to show examples of query selector and query selector all since we're going to be using those a lot. So again, the first three there are pretty self-explanatory, but the query selector can accept any CSS style selector. So you can use things like the hashtag to clarify it's an ID or the dot if you want a class. So basically anything for CSS that you used as a style selector, you can just pass it directly into query selector. And if that's unclear to you now, don't worry, I'll show plenty of examples as we move along. But again, the difference between query selector and then query selector all is that query selector all returns a list of all matches, query selector just returns the first match. Okay, the relevant files for this particular lecture are part one, main page.html, and part one, colorchanger.js. We're going to start off by disconnecting the HTML file from colorchanger.javascript and exploring it a bit manually. Then we're going to code out a complex example, which is actually going to be colorchanger.js. All right, let's explore these various methods and get started by opening up those two files in the editor and linking them to our browser. Okay, so here I have part one main page HTML open in my editor, and I also have it open in my browser on the right hand side. And something you notice that's probably pretty interesting to you is that the heading one is randomly changing color. And you're probably wondering how the heck is that happening? Well, in this lecture, we're going to actually code out the example that creates that effect in order to begin explaining how we can grab elements from the document object model and then affect them using JavaScript. But what we're going to do to start off is in part one underscore main underscore page, scroll all the way down and you should see the connection to the part one color changer.js script. What I want you to do is comment this out to begin with, save it, and then refresh the connection page and you should see it just turn to black. What we're going to be focusing on right now is grabbing those common document attributes and then showing the various methods we have to grab HTML elements. So let's get started on that. I'm going to expand my browser and start off by exploring these points right here, which we also covered in the slide. So what's nice about this HTML file is it's basically notes for what we're going to be doing. I'm going to right click, hit inspect, and then open up the console. 
And your console is probably not going to be as zoomed in as mine because this is just for readability. Let's show you how to grab important document attributes. If you want to grab the actual URL of the website, you pass document and then all caps URL and this returns the URL of the website. In my case, stuff is being hosted locally, so I just get the file location. If you want to grab everything inside the body, you can say document.body, hit enter, and then you can see here we actually have HTML code, which is the entire body. And if we want to grab everything in the head, we just say document.head, and notice these are attributes, not methods, so I'm not putting any closed parentheses after them. We can expand this and check out the head of the document. And finally, if there are links on the page, in our case, there are no links, but if you wanted to get a list of all the links, you would use document.links. Here again, an empty list because there are no links on that page. Now let's move on to some of these more important methods. Well, not more important, but probably more useful. The get element by ID, and then the query selector family of elements. Let's clear this console. If we want to actually grab elements by ID, we can use the get element by ID method. But first off, let's go back to the HTML and actually give an ID to one of these HTML elements. So let's give this list item, the very first list item that says document.url, I'm going to give it an ID of pick me. We'll save it. And then let's also add a class in here somewhere. Let's give both unordered lists a class of my UL, and we'll also give this one a class equal to my UL. So my UL, my UL, there's a two classes, and then we have one instance of the pick me ID. I'm going to save this, and then I'll actually refresh my page to make sure those changes are loaded up here. And then let's show you how we can grab these elements, with the document object model, using the methods we just described. So I expand this again, and then what I'm going to be doing here is off the document, I will say get element by ID, and then I pass in the ID I want. And remember, my ID, if I look back at the actual HTML, is just pick me. So let's type that in. Pick me. We hit enter, and we see here the HTML. It's a list item, has ID pick me, and then it says document URL. This is the actual URL of the website. So if we come back up here, it's actually highlighted when I hover over it, which is kind of nice that Chrome's kind of helping you out here and pointing out what you actually grabbed. So that's how you can grab an element by ID. And then if we want to grab by a class name, we say elements by class name. We can see it kind of auto-completes there. And remember the class name we created was my UL. And then we get back what is essentially kind of acting like a list or an array. It's not quite a JavaScript array, so keep that in mind, but it acts very similar to it. If we expand this, we see we have essentially this HTML collection of these two unordered lists, and those have a bunch of properties themselves. And later on, we're going to see how we can actually grab those properties and affect them. But I'm going to collapse this for right now. So we were able to grab elements by ID, elements by class name, and if you wanted to grab elements by the tag name, you probably guessed that already, but you just say document dot get elements by tag name, and then input the tag you want. So if I want all the list elements, I just pass in li, and then those are all the list elements. And you're also given awareness that one of these has an ID attached to it. Now let's talk about query selector and query selector all, which are not quite as obvious as the ID, class name, and tag name methods. Query selector is really similar as far as grabbing HTML elements, but what differentiates it from the by ID, by class name, or by tag name is it actually uses the CSS style selector. So it saves you a bunch of time. And let me show you what I actually mean by CSS style selector. If I clear this, I'm going to grab my document, say query selector, and then what I'm going to actually do here is pass in a query selector for a CSS selector. So I will say hashtag pick me. I hit enter and I get the ID pick me. So just like you would if you had a CSS file attached to the HTML and you wanted to affect an ID, you would call the CSS style selector, hashtag for the ID and then the ID name. The query selector actually allows you to grab things by that CSS style selector. So that makes your life a lot easier 
And now you don't actually need to even use by ID, by class name, by tag name. You can do everything with query selector and query selector all. So let's imagine I wanted to grab all the li tags. Well, I could just say document query selector. Well, let's say query selector all. I pass in li, hit enter, and I get the exact same thing as if I had done it by class name, or excuse me, if I had done it by tag name. If I wanted to do it by class name, well, I would say document, and then query selector all. Oops, not query command. Query selector all and then pass in the class. But remember for CSS style selectors, a class has a dot. So we say dot and then the class name, which was my UL, hit enter, and we get back the exact same thing we previously got when we said get elements by class name. And hopefully now you get the idea that all you have to do with query selector and query selector all is pass in the actual CSS selector tag. And that saves you a lot of time for typing and it just makes the whole process a little more clear. And as I previously mentioned, the difference between query selector and query selector all is that query selector all returns all the objects matching the CSS style selector. Query selector just returns the very first object. So for instance, here I see document query selector all dot my UL returns two instances of that class. Let's say I just wanted to grab the first one. Well, then I could say document query selector dot my ul and that will just return the very first instance of this class on the html page so that's the main difference between query selector all and query selector okay so we've covered how to actually grab the objects let's show a very simple example of how to interact with those objects and change their properties let's imagine i want to change the color of the header well the first thing i need to do is actually grab the header so I will create a variable, we'll call it my header, and I'm going to set it equal to document.querySelector, and then pass in the CSS selector. In this case, it's just the very first instance of heading one. I hit enter, and if I check out my header, I get back h1. It has some sort of style call saying it's color black. Most likely yours just says this is the header. I've already manipulated it before. But here we have the header, the HTML. Now let's change the actual color. So in this case, I need to say my header dot, and you'll notice we have a ton of attributes available for this header object or heading object. First one we're going to mess around with is style. So then I will say style, and as you scroll down, you're going to see a lot of the things we learned about during the CSS section of the course, things like the border width, things like the color, um, other things such as font properties, height, etc., margin. But let's keep it simple. Let's just grab the color. And if I want to change it, all I have to do is set this equal to some other value. So for instance, let's change it to red. I hit enter here. And now up here on the website page, I can see this is the header has been turned red. And that's the basic fundamental idea of actually grabbing things from the document object model and then affecting them in some manner, changing their properties. And that's really how the front end stack works. You have HTML and CSS, and then JavaScript can use the DOM to go in and grab things. And later on, we'll show you much more advanced methods, such as performing those actions or interactions on clicks or when you hover over text. But the fundamental idea behind everything is that you're grabbing things from the document object model and then interacting with them or changing their properties in some way. Now let's actually show you how we can create that random color generator in the JavaScript file. So I will come back here to this HTML page right here, and all the way down, I'm going to connect it back to part one color changer script, save it. And if you come over to the JavaScript, so let's expand this a little more so we can get a good look at it. We have some examples of what we just did, grabbing that header, changing that style color, but let's show you how we could actually create the random color changing. And I'm just gonna walk through this code because it's essentially a little too complex for us at this moment in time, but later on you can always come back to this and you probably will understand it completely. In fact, right now you should know enough JavaScript that you're able to read this. But let's say I wanted to get a random color function. So every second I change something to a random color. Well, the first thing I need to do is figure out how do I get a random color using JavaScript? 
And for that, you will probably use Stack Overflow. And I actually linked the Stack Overflow that answers that question. So for me personally, I'm not dealing with JavaScript as often as I would like. I'm usually dealing with Python more. So if I'm forgetful of how to actually grab a random color, I will start Google searching. And if you Google search this, you'll eventually come up to this Stack Overflow link, which is right here for you. And someone has been nice enough to place the actual answer of a random color generator in JavaScript. So we can just copy and paste this code and put it in our script. And basically what this is doing, we can see we have letters, we have some hex code, and it's saying for i is equal to zero all the way i less than six, it's going to somehow grab a series of random letters and then put them in front of the hashtag and that's making hex codes for us and it's returning that hex code. So all this is doing is it's making random hex codes for us. So then we create this simple function for clarity. We say function change header color. We say the color input is get random color. So again, that's just returning a random hex code. And then I'm saying header.style.color is equal to the color input, that random hex code that we just created. And then I'm going to perform that action over a set of intervals. And this is some JavaScript code for actually performing some JavaScript function over a set of certain intervals, in our case, milliseconds. So all I'm saying here is every 500 milliseconds, call this function right here, change header color. So now if I save this and I come back to my actual page, over here, my main page, and I refresh, I see now that I'm changing the color randomly every half a second. And that's the main fundamental idea behind the document object model and the interaction. Now what we're going to cover is many more methods and many more details about this process and how to go through it in future lectures in this section of the course. And then later on, we'll show you jQuery, which kind of also simplifies this entire process for you. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture.